What is going on everybody and welcome back to the electrician's broom. Yeah! Today we're going to wire up a GFCI in a normal receptacle and we're going to show you how to hook up the line and load side of a GFCI. Let's get into it. Starting first with our GFCI location, we're going to go ahead and feed it with our power source, which is going to be called our line side of our GFI. And to indicate that this is your line side or power source, you're going to want to mark it with a Sharpie and just write line on the jacket of the Romex. Now you can go ahead and secure your wire. Next, we can pull the load side from our GFCI to our next receptacle location. Get these landed and secured. At your GFCI location, I know that we already wrote line, but it's a good practice to write load on the load wire as well, just so there's no confusion. Quick recap of the wiring. We have our power source coming in, which is gonna be the line side for our GFCI, and then out of our GFCI, we have our load side that goes to our next receptacle. We've got our jacket stripped off. Now we can take a look at what we have inside of our boxes. Since we took the jacket off of our wires, obviously we don't have it indicated which side is line and load anymore. So there's two ways you can go about this. You can either make little tags with the Romex jacket that say line and load, and you can slide them onto the wires for the next guy. That way he knows when he's actually terminating the device, which one is line and load. The other option that you can do is take your line side and just twist the wires together. That way when someone comes to trim out the device, they know that this is the line side, as long as it's communicated. And obviously you're gonna take your grounds, splice and pigtail, tuck them back into the box, but unlike a normal circuit with receptacles that you'd hook up, you're not gonna splice and pigtail your neutrals and you're not gonna splice and pigtail your hots. What you're gonna do is take your line and place that at the line side indicated on the back of the receptacle, right there. And then it actually comes with tape on it. Sometimes I've seen this falling off from the box, so it's not good to rely on the tape. But if you're using line and load, you remove the tape and on the bottom of your GFCI, it will say load, line, load. Let's go ahead and make this up and we'll hook up our device. Looking at our wiring here, we have our line side going into the line side of our GFCI. And then we have our load side going into the load side of the GFCI. And then our ground is on the bottom. Our next device location is just going to be a normal receptacle. So let's go ahead and get that hooked up. Just like that, neutral side and our ground. You know what time it is. We are about to get the wall turned on. If you are enjoying the video or learning something, I would greatly appreciate it if you would like and subscribe. Let's juice the wall up. Real quick, before we start testing stuff, this is the tester, the plug tester that we're gonna be using. And as you can see, it says push to check GFCI. So this is how it works. Plug it in. On the right side, you have two orange lights and indicated down here at the bottom, that means that it's wired correctly. So to test the GFCI, you press the button on top and it trips it. Okay, so you hear that beeping? I did not know that they made audible GFCI devices. Apparently they make devices now where if the GFCI trips, it will tell you with that annoying sound. So let's go ahead and reset it. The sound goes off. On our GFCI device, you have a reset as well as a test button. So you don't need the plug tester to test the actual GFCI. So we can go ahead and press test. 
it trips, seems to be working properly. Now we'll go ahead and press reset. Now everything comes back on. Now at this device location, obviously this isn't a GFCI, it's just a normal receptacle. But we've hooked it up to the load side of the GFCI, which means that this is GFCI protected. So if we plug our tester in and test it, it trips. If you were to bypass the line and load function of this device and just make a pigtail and splice straight through with your power source to your load side, it would not function properly. You have to go into that device and then out of that device to protect anything downstream from this GFCI. So we pigtailed this, it's no longer on line and load, it is only on line. So if we trip the device here, I'm gonna plug it in. You set it. Now, if we go over to here, we're gonna plug our device in, or our plug tester. Everything looks good, we're gonna hit our GFCI trip button. Nothing happens. Because we brought power in, spliced directly to the wire that goes to our next device location without going into the load function of the GFCI. So it will not trip. In some applications where it's not required to have this device be GFCI protected, you absolutely can do it that way. You can pigtail it, hook up to the line side, this is a GFCI, or this is GFCI protected, this is not GFCI protected. If it's not required, that's totally fine. But if you wanna protect things downstream from this device, you have to do the line and load function, or the, the line and load makeup on the GFCI. That wraps up today's video on hooking up a GFCI. Thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed yourself or learned something. As always, electrical work is incredibly dangerous and it is not without its consequences. It can kill you. Do not perform this work unless you are a professional. This is for informational purposes only. Be safe out there, and I'll see you in the next one.